everyone, this is me Garima Singh. I'm back with geography. Let's start with eight chapter. We have already covered all those seven chapter. So our eight chapter is transport and communication. That is one type of tertiary activity. We have discussed in previous lecture where we discussed four type. First one was trade and commerce. Second was communication. Third was transport, and fourth was services. So transport and communication. This type of tertiary activity we have studied in previous lecture about tertiary activity let's move on to these two topic in a very detailed way let's discuss first that is transport so transport is a service as you know is a facility or service for the people or good to transfer from one place to another it is an organized service industry that handle loading unloading delivery then we will discuss uh, mode of uh, transportation the main mode of uh, transportation are land water air and pipelines these are used for inter regional and intra regional transport and each one except pipeline carry both passenger and goods several pieces uh, nodes joined together by series of route to form a pattern is called transport network firstly let's go to the land transport this include uh, land transport include movement of goods and services over land that is through rail that is through rail and road actually i just mix the both and i say rail it's road and rail earlier human them silver carriers such as in Palkis, tolis, letter pack animals such as mules, horses, camels were used. Then dogs and reindeer were used in North America. In India, bullocks were used to pull carts. The revolution came after invention of steam engine. So there, thereafter, it started railway and roadways with invention of internal. combustion engine and uh, no, among the new means of land transport are pipeline ropeways uh, and cableways rope and cableways are generally found on steep mountain low slopes and mines which are not suitable for building roads so in land transport what are uh, road transport so road you can say it is the most economical for short distance and gaining importance for um, free transport due to its door to door service than metal road or all weather roads while unmetalled roads are not serviceable in all season due to simple construction than um, the quality construction maintenance of road is better in developed countries as compared to developing even road density the total motable uh, road length of the world is only 15 kilo, 15 million km in which north america separately accounted 33% road density is the total length of road per 100 square km of area that you can say then traffic flows it refer to traffic on road that has increased dramatically in recent years as the road network cannot cope with demand of traffic so congestion occur then discuss about highways this one is highway um they are metal road connecting distant places for unobstructed vehicular movement these are 80 meter wide with separate traffic lane bridges fly over and dual carriage way uh, in north america there is dense network of highways pacific coast is linked to atlantic coast Vancouver is connected to Newfoundland by Trans Canadian Highway the Trans Continent Stuart Highway connect Darwin Melbourne to Alice Spring in Australia Europe has well developed highway network Moscow Volgovsko highway is important for Russia then in India national highway and its seven connecting Varanasi and Kanyavar is the longest highway of the country the golden quadrilateral super expressway is under construction no it's had been constructed now nh44 become the longest running highway in india it connect shrinagar to kanyakumari earlier was nh7 nh7 is renamed as nh44 in africa alger in north is connected to guinea and kiaro connected to cape town in south so it will 
talk about every continent's highway then broader roads broader roads are road laid along international boundaries the road help in transport of goods to border area and military camps border roads so they are made along international boundaries then railway railway are best suited for transportation of uh, bulky goods and passenger over long distance rail road is uh, suited for short distance railways for long distance then the rail network of africa and south america connect the mineral rich and fertile area in, and it is developed primarily to utilize the natural resource then let's discuss about few railways first one is transcontinental railway uh, the railway line that uh, run across the continent and link it to and it called transcontinental rail railway line they are basically concept for economic political and various purpose trans siberian railway it is in russian longest railway in the world trans siberian uh, railway is the longest in the world it run between saint Pittsburgh in west to all the scoring is passing from Mexico Mexico then we will discuss trans Canadian railway constructed in 1886 it is a 7050 km long long railway in Canada that link Halifax in east to Vancouver in west the Union and Pacific railway the rail line connect New York on Atlantic coast to San Francisco the rail line San Francisco on the Pacific coast passing through Cleveland, Chicago, Omaha, Iowa. The most valuable export on this route are ores, grain, paper, chemical and machinery. Then there is a Australian Transcontinental Railway. The rail line run east west and east across southern part of continent from Perth to the western west coast to Sydney on the east coast. Then Orient Express The, this line run from Paris to Istanbul, passing through Strasbourg, Munich, Vienna, Budapest, and Belgrade. It has reduced the 10-day journey to only four days. Then we done know with road and rail. That part of land transport. Now we'll discuss water transport. So this is the cheapest mode of transport. Water transport is the cheapest mode, as no construction cost is there. very little maintenance cost so their water transport is divided into sea route and inland waterways so sea and ocean provide smooth highway transversable in all direction with no maintenance cost modern no passenger ships and cargo ships are equipped with various navigation aids sea route are the important sura north atlantic sea route it linked here you can read it linked northeastern usa and northwestern usa it is the busiest in the world and also called big trunk route north atlantic sea route is also called as big trunk route because this is the busiest north atlantic sea route busiest and called big trunk route then mediterranean uh, indian ocean sea route this route connect indus lies western europe and western africa south africa southeast asia australia and new zealand natural resources such as gold diamond copper tin groundnut oil palm coffee and fruits are transported through it then uh, cape of good hope sea route so link west europe and west africa countries with brazil argentina and south then traffic is less on this route because countries filling in this route have similar product and resources than south pacific sea route south so this is route connect the port on the west coast of north america with those of asia then south pacific area then south coastal shipping north pacific south pacific then coastal shipping 
Coastal shipping is a convenient mode of transport with long coastline, example USA, China and India. This type of shipping can reduce congestion on land road. The next is uh, shipping canals. Shipping canals. So there are two canals that serve as gateway of commerce for both eastern and western world. First one is Suez Canal. Next is Panama. Suez Canal constructed in 1869. It is man-made canal linking the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. It is um, once this kilometer, kilometer long. These are just fake. You have to read that it is uh, constructed 1869, man-made on its route and all. It connects, Swiss Canal connect Mediterranean Sea and Red Sea. Swiss Canal connect. Swiss Canal, Mediterranean Sea and Red Sea. Next is Panama Canal. It is man-made canal. The, the both are man-made. Panama is man-made and linking Atlantic Ocean with Pacific. Atlantic Pacific link with Panama. Then inland waterways. Inland uh, river, canal, take, lakes, coastal areas are inland waterway for transportation of cargo. River, canal, lakes and coastal area. Then the important waterways are Rhine waterway, the waterway link the industrial area of Switzerland and Germany, France, Belgium and the Netherlands with North Sea route. Danube waterway, the Danube river which is navigable up to Toma, emerged in Black Forest is mainly for export of wheat, timber and machinery then. The Volga waterway, Volga is one of the developed waterway of Russia, it is navigable up to 11,200 km. Then the Great Lake St. Lawrence Seaway. The Great Lake along with the estuary of St. Lawrence River from Waterway North America. Then Mississippi Waterway. The Mississippi OU Waterway link that interior part of USA with the Gulf of Mexico and South. These you have to see in map. Then Air Transport. It is the fastest means of transport, but it is very costly. Air transport has brought connectivity, revolution in hospitable deserts, mountainous region. Due to high construction maintenance cost, air transport is more developed in highly industrialized country than intercontinental air route. Intercontinental air route. So, USA accounts for 60% of airways of the world. Important cities are nodal point where the route coverage or radio to all continents. Then pipelines. So pipeline are used to transport water, petroleum, natural gas, liquefied coal for uninterrupted norm. Milk is supplied through pipeline in New Zealand. Then USA has dense network of pipeline, big engine, famous pipeline of USA that transport petroleum from the oil well of the Gulf of Mexico. Then uh, communication. So, long distance communication in the form of telegraph and telephone are important earlier. Now, it's been done through just with messages, mail, all about internet. Latest technology have resulted in optical fiber cable. They allow large quantity of data to be transmitted that are virtually error free. Now, the telecommunication merged with computer to form integrated network termed as internet. Next is satellite communication in India. <coughs> Artificial satellites are developed in Earth orbit to enhance communication and improve connectivity. This is a satellite communication which has reduced the per unit cost and time of communication. India developed its own uh, satellite Aryabhat and launched it on 19th April 1979. Bhaskar won in 79 and then Rohini in 1980. Insta IB satellite used for long distance communication, weather forecasting, then cyberspace internet. This is the latest uh, technology which there is instant connectivity by accessing the telephone in computerized space. It is called cyberspace or internet and it is encompassed by the world wide web. Majority of internet users are in USA, UK, Germany, Japan, China and India. So, the social and economic space has expanded through email, e-commerce, e-learning and e-governance. That's for 
that's what this class that was crux so you have to go through various type of communication various type of transport ways now let's discuss question and answer choose the uh, right answer from the four uh, alternative given with the transcontinental stuart highway runs between darwin and melbourne so the transcontinental stuart highway is darwin and melbourne which country has the highest density of railway network us us has the higher density of railway network then the big trunk road run through the north atlantic ocean the big trunk road runs through the north atlantic ocean so big trunk road it's north atlantic ocean the big inch pipeline transport petroleum big inch pipeline transport petroleum then fifth is uh, which one pair of the following place is linked by Ch channel tunnel that is Paris London then answer the following question in about 30 words first <coughs> what are the problem of road transport in mountain desert and flood prone region Road transportation depends heavily on the physiography of nature. Mountainous region, in mountainous region, irregular terrain make road construction difficult as cutting through mountain. While construction is not only costly but also dangerous. Also, frequent landslide make the road unfit for use. Desert region, in desert region, laying down of a road is not easy as sand does not provide with the strong base for construction of road. Flood prone region in flood prone uh, flood prone region road and frequently flooded hence they cannot be used and remain unfit for use. Then what is transcontinental railway? Transcontinental railway connect to end of a continent. They are instrumental in economic life of a country. They were constructed for economic and political reason to facilitate long run in different direction. They are essential for transportation of not only passenger but mainly of freight example transcontinental siberian railway third is uh, what are advantage of water transport water uh, water transport is still the main means of transportation for bulky goods over a long distance due to its efficiency one of the great advantage of uh, water transportation is that it does not require route construction the ocean are linked with each other and are negotiable with ships of various size all that is needed is to provide port facilitate at two end. It is much cheaper because the friction of water is far less than that of land. Next is answer the following. You have these are a bit longer question. Elucidate this statement in a well managed transport system. Various mode complement each other. Transport is a service or facility for the carriage of person and good from one place to other using humans, animal, and different kind of vehicle. Such movement take place over land, water, and air. The significance of mode depend on the type of good and services to be transported. Cost of transport and mode available. International movement of good is handled by ocean freight. Road transport is cheaper and faster over short distance and for door-to-door -door service. Railway are more suited for large volumes of bulky material over long distance within a country. Then high value light and perishable good are best moved by airways then none of the transport system is self-sufficient so well managed transportation system there should be a proper linkage between all the modes essential ports are a point of collection of goods carried out carried by waterways they must have efficient linkage with railway and roadways so that goods can be taken to interiors uh, railways are efficient in connecting a far off places but they can't penetrate deep into interior or provide door to do service for that uh, efficient road system is important along with transportation facility like, facility like buses should be available there next is which are the major region of the world having dense network of airways so frequent air services are available to many part of the world although UK pioneered the use of commercial jet transport USA developed 
largely post war international civil aviation today more than 250 commercial airline offer regular service to different part of the world recent development can change the future of course of air transport supersonic aircraft cover the distance between london and new york within 3 and a half hour in the northern hemisphere there is a distance east west belt of intercontinental air routes so dense network exists in eastern usa just write it down dense network is in eastern eastern part of usa then western europe west part of europe south east asia usa alone account for 60% of the airway of the world in new york london Paris, Amsterdam, Frankfurt, Moscow, New Delhi, Karachi, San Francisco. They are the nodal point where air route converge or ready to all continent. Next is um, what are the mode by which cyberspace will expand the contemporary economic and social space of human? Human being have used different method. Long distance communication, obviously, telegraph and the telephone were important. Telegraph was instrumental in colonization of the America, whereas the telephone became a critical factor in urbanization of America. Then, even today, telephone is the most commonly used mode in developing country. The use of cell phones made possible by satellite is important for rural connectivity. The world soon upgraded their copper cable system, include op. take fiber cable these allow large quantity of data to be transmitted rapidly securely and virtually error free today internet is the largest electronic network artificial satellite now are successfully deployed in the earth orbit to connect even the remote uh, corner of the globe with limited on site verification these have rendered the unit cost and time of communication invariant in term of distance cyberspace is the world of electronic computerized space it is encompassed by the internet such as the uh, world wide web in simple word it is electronic digital world for communicating or accessing information over computer network it is uh, internet together with fax television radio will be accessible to more and more people cutting across space and time so it is this modern communication system more than transport that has made concept of uh, global village reality that's for today i have uh, completed this chapter that is transport and communication in this chapter we read about various mode of transportation like pipelines in land we discuss road highways railways waterways border roads then we have uh, discussed about transcontinental railway trans siberian railway trans canadian union pacific railway then australian trans railway orient express this run through paris here we have discussed water transport pipelines sea routes so this chapter is all about this in next lecture we will discuss next chapter that will be i think uh, ninth chapter that's for today thank you